it's a great pleasure that we welcome all of you to our new Notre Dame community this afternoon for this auspicious occasion of the Vedic wedding. And of course we would like to give a special welcome to all the parents and the relatives of those who are going to be married this afternoon. We're very happy that all of you are having this beautiful sunny summer afternoon for this very beautiful and auspicious function. Of course, a marriage ceremony is something that is always appreciated and enjoyed in any culture. It is especially so in the ancient Vedic culture, the spiritual culture of India. In the ancient Vedic culture of India, marriage would serve two purposes. One is to meet the material needs of a man and a woman. Uh, it is only natural that in this material creation, a boy is attracted to a girl and a girl is attracted to a boy. And when they come together and marry, they can meet the basic requirements of human life. But perhaps the deeper meaning of the marriage in India in ancient Vedic culture was to meet the spiritual requirements of life. The ancient sages of India tell us, Atlatovimajanasya, now that we have come to the human form of life, now is the time to inquire about spiritual things, to come closer to God. That is the ultimate purpose of human love, to awaken our dormant love for God. Of course, that is a great challenge. Anything that is difficult to achieve in this world takes great discipline, takes great austerity, takes great effort. But to speak about the greatest goal of life, awakening our love for God, and going back to the spiritual world. Therefore, in Vedic culture, marriage was called an ashram. It was a place of spiritual learning. In Vedic culture, life would begin. Um, one would be a student, and under the direction of the spiritual master, he would learn the various philosophy of Vedic culture, the rules, the, ritual, the rituals, etc. And the next stage of life is that a man and woman would come together and they would be married. The third stage of life is that the husband and wife, after the children had grown up and were uh, already themselves married, had their families, etc., the husband and wife would travel to holy places to become purified. At the final stage of life, the man will become a spiritual teacher, a spiritual master. So part of this spiritual evolution, maturing, was the marriage ashram, where the husband and wife would come together, not simply to meet the material demands and material necessities, but to help each other progress in spiritual life, to come closer to God. Like teamwork, actually, we see that teamwork is something, by teamwork, we can achieve something very great. So the man and the woman would come together and they would study the scriptures and they would do devotional service to God, they would go to the temple regularly, actually, they would make their house into a temple 
with the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this will develop a very deep spiritual relationship, a very deep spiritual attachment to each other because they are helping each other towards life's ultimate goal. And if you are very pleased to hear that in the Vedic culture, <coughs> there was never any divorce. There was no need for divorce because the couples had a very deep spiritual relationship, not a superficial relationship, simply based on sense gratification. <coughs> I read a recent report of a survey around the world that three out of four marriages end in divorce. Why is this? Because many times the consideration for marriage is simply bodily beauty or the ability to satisfy each other's senses. But that is very superficial. According to Vedic culture, we are not these bodies, we are the spirit soul within the body, we are actually all eternal servants of God. So although the married couples in Vedic culture are acting as material partners, because naturally the man helps the woman and the woman helps the man, a deeper meaning is they are spiritual partners. They are helping each other attain the ultimate goal of life, love of God. So therefore the relationship is very deep. And we very rarely, if ever, see divorce in Vedic culture. Actually because the relationship is so close in Krishna consciousness, the relationships are so personal in service to God, the man and the woman are actually considered in Vedic culture to be like one body. Yes, when we address the couple in Vedic culture, they are like one body. And the ladies will be very happy to hear that the sages consider that the female, the lady, she is the better half of the body. Why is the lady considered the better half of that one body? Because the man is very busy working to maintain the family, the wife and the children, and the wife, she has time to concentrate on religious duties, religious activities. Generally, in the Vedic culture in the home, the deity of Lord Krishna was established, there was an altar, even in the home, and the lady, the wife, was always careful to make sure that the various rituals and activities were going on to please the deity. She was very Krishna conscious, and this way the lady is considered the better half of that one body. So here our community, our new Brajadam, one of the many communities in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, we are trying to show what is ideal life, what is ideal human life. How as a student one can learn to worship God, how in married life one can learn to worship God, how in renounced life one can learn to worship God. So we are very proud today to present all these couples who we consider to be ideal Krishna conscious couples, ideal married couples who can set an example, actually, for the whole of human society. Their example is very important, their contribution to human society is very important. How one can be God conscious, how one can be Krishna conscious in any situation of life. 
És azt is hogy hogy nem tudják mutatni, hogy hívja lehet minden élethelyzetben egy kisre tudatosnak lenni. Of course, right now we see each couple sitting beside each other, each man and woman sitting beside each other as a couple. So that you could wish to hear the shadow of Allah Shri Rath and Tarek. But certainly the result of this marriage is that in the future, little ones will come, children will come. So that you could wish to hear the shadow of Allah Shri Rath and Tarek. So that you could But the special nature of the children that are born into Krishna conscious families is that they are trained also to be simple persons. And as you know, in Krishna consciousness, we live in celibate before marriage. And in marriage, sex life is there only to produce a Krishna conscious child. And some of you think, oh, this is very strict. Why are there such restrictions as that? But actually, in Krishna consciousness, we try to make everything we do a spiritual activity, something very sacred with deep meaning. So the real joy of sex life is to conceive a child and bring that child into the world, train that child materially and spiritually. So much so that that child can become a lover of God and at the end of his life go back to the spiritual world, never to take birth again in this world of birth and death. Szóval nem lényeg, hogy az egyetlen ügyelő az az, hogy a milyen gyereket tudunk a világra hozni, aki kisebb tudatban fogunk tanítani, a valami a régi sem tudatossá válni, és illetve végül soha lesz ülesen a világban az eredmény világban. So that is another valuable contribution of the marriage ashram in International Society for Christian Consciousness. Not only are they setting a very good example of the devotees who are lovers of God, but they are also bringing forth children who are actually a very valuable asset, spiritual asset, to our society. So a One of the great spiritual masters in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, the spiritual master of my spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he said, I see no want of anything in this world. Actually, there's plenty of everything. The only thing that is missing is genuine God consciousness. So my hope is that these married couples will set a very nice example for all to follow and they will bring forth nice Krishna conscious children who will spread this wonderful philosophy, this ancient spiritual culture throughout the world and be a real blessing for humanity. Of course, again, to achieve that great goal of love of God is not an easy thing, it's not a cheap thing, it takes great endeavor. We need all the help that we can get. So on this auspicious occasion, we call upon the help of our beloved deities here in our community, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar, to bless all these couples that they may be successful in their perhaps to Ashram. We call upon the founder of Charya, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada, who introduced this Vedic culture to all of us, to please shower his blessings also upon all these uh, couples who are about to take their marriage vows, they can be successful in the Kuhasta Ashram. We ask the advanced devotees, the renounced devotees in Krishna consciousness, such as the Holiness Dr. Vicky Kuni Maharaj, Shivam Maharaj, Um, Dr. Vinayaka Vinay Maharaj and others also to bless them and may be successful in the endeavor to progress in Krishna consciousness and his Guru Hasra Ashram. 
Szerintem az időszakban is nagyon sok más lehetett, és akik itt jelen vannak, hogy ők is adják az állásaikat, őszöntsége a vakfűgyőkorolára, és őszöntsége a sírási mellára, és őszöntsége a vakfűgyőkorolára, és őszöntsége a vakfűgyőkorolára, és őszöntsége a vakfűgyőkorolára, és őszöntsége a vakfűgyő And we ask all the assembled devotees to give their blessings. We ask all the devotees to give their blessings. And we ask all the devotees to give their blessings. We ask all the devotees to give their blessings. And we ask all the devotees to give their blessings. Actually, you had the most difficult job. You had to raise them from little babies up to grown ups. So you, you get the real credit because you had the hardest job. You had to change all those diapers. We ask all the devotees to give their blessings. And we ask all the devotees to give their blessings. And we ask all the devotees to give their blessings. And we ask all the devotees to give their blessings. And we ask all the devotees to give their blessings. So you also, you know these children very well. I hope that you appreciate that they have taken to this wonderful spiritual path. You also please give your blessings for a successful marriage. So that you can have a selected person and have a very important shirt on. I do not forget that it's a very important shirt. It's okay. Very important. We would like to ask all the wonderful guests who come from the local villages in this area, different parts of Hungary. Thank you for coming. We also please give your Blessings for successful marriage. With all those blessings, I'm sure we have no difficulty in having a very successful Kuhasra Ashram, another revolving back home back to Gaia. I said that my family members are going to show me how to take care of their family. They have never, never ever said no to each other. They don't show their kazada shaker. They just show their good company. They don't take care of each other. They just show their good company. They don't take care of each other. So once again, thank you for coming. The head priest of this auspicious function <coughs> this afternoon, this is Holy Miss Dr. Vicky Kumar. She has come all the way from Mayapur, from Bengal, India, specifically to oversee this function. A full patra and a third patra show. We say to this, she will not be the full marriage. Thank you, Mayapur, for your time. Then we have the Indian marriage. I'm going to do this third patra show. And the assistant priest, the assistant priest. In this auspicious function, will be one of our brahmacharis who's come all the way from New Zealand. It's 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 Sri Pallad Das will be assisting Maharaj in the various rituals, which are actually over 5,000 years old. We shall share it with the brahmacharis who have taken some easier and more complicated Sri Pallad Das. We shall be able to achieve our wishes. The rituals that you will see, the function that you will see today, is exactly according to the ancient Vedic scriptures of India. Which were written down by the ancient sages over 5,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Very, very opportunity for all of you. As a ritual, we are making plans for the coming of the Rishi. We need to get ready for the Rishi Sanghiraj to be ready. So we need to make sure that all the people are ready for the Rishi. Okay. So without further ado, we will begin the marriage ceremony. So I said that the Kolesha is in the house of Shali Sarkarpash. And we will ask our head priest, Dr. Vijay Pumalaya, to chant the auspicious mantras. For purification. We begin with Achma. Is this one on? Can you please Achma now? So please, please repeat after me. Can you show me the other one? Om Abhavitra 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 Sarvavastam Gatopiva Yas Yas Marat Kundari Kaksham Sa Bahya Yantara Sujihi Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Sri Vishnu Achma You done? You done Achma? Thank you. 
Amen. Auspicious tree in India. We've taken some shavings from that, made a paste out of it, and that would bind the hands together of the couple. So the couples can put out their, each other can put out their right hand and we'll put some paste on it, so and they will be stuck together. Okay, I can put it okay down there. Once you can put your hands together. Put your right hand on the side of the body, put your right hand on the side of the body. Thank you. 
szeretet az anyu és a szeretet a kapu. A szeretet a szeretet utcájába lépett. A szeretet a keresztül kapnak lettében. Ő szeretet, ez a szívet lén.
What is your heart? Let that be my heart. What is my heart? Let that be yours. This this worship for the heirs by heirs of life. By this, I bind you. I say this to you who can see and hope. Death, do not harm my valid children. I say this to you who can see and hear. Ram 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 Ram
कुंडारी
Sangina Shulakaya, Chakshu Niditam Janitas Mai Sigur Vena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Sabitam Jena Bhutale, Shwam Rupa Padamayam Vidanti Svapadanti Kham, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Hara Sri Vasari Guru Bhakti Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Om Ahim Shom, Om Fat, Om Tataka, Abhidhi Keshe Gajalat, Sada Balochana, Vidhara, Tana, Kashpa, Shada, Vasana, In the absence of the Sadhanas, Shivara Maharaj, I've been asked to speak. Shivara Maharaj, I'm so sorry, Shivara Maharaj, I'm ready to come to the Kanyan Basana. And after I speak, then, His Holiness Bhakti Vijay Puna Maharaj will enlighten us on the offenses to the so today the initiating spiritual masters who are present here are accepting disciples uh, to Guru Vaishnav Shampadaya. Technically this is called Diksha, where it's been referred to as Second birth. The first birth is from the womb of our mother. And it's understood that that is a birth into ignorance. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that all living entities are born into material nature, overcome by the dualities of desire and hatred. A Bhagavad Gita van az Úr Kisna azt mondja, hogy minden élmény egy jövőleg és kapcsolatban. This includes all living entities uh, in material existence from Brahma down to the insignificant ant. Tehát az a születünk tudatásán is az ízlen minden élmény az Úr Brahma által a jelentéktelen hangyai. So however you take your birth, wherever you take your birth in this material world is actually an embarrassment. Bárhol is születünk meg ebben az anyagi világban, ez egy szégyen. Although people like to celebrate their birthdays, actually, it's an illusion. Because birth into this material world means a birth of forgetfulness. We have forgotten our beloved Lord, Krishna. We sacrifice our glorious position as the Lord's servants in the spiritual world to come to this world of birth and death. The material world has been compared to a prison house. When one goes to the prison, one is sent to the prison, and he's obliged to wear a special uniform to identify him as a prisoner. Just in case he should try to escape. If he escaped the prison, everyone would recognize, oh, here's a criminal. He's wearing a, a, a striped suit, white and black stripes. This is a prisoner. So certainly no prisoner is proud of his uniform. So similarly, when we become criminals in the sense that we rebel against our beloved Lord, Krishna, we come to this material world, then we take a special uniform, it's called a material body. So although people are very attached to their bodies, they like to glorify their bodies, actually this body is nothing to be proud of. Because we have taken this body, this material body, then we have to suffer birth, disease, old age, and death. Actually, on their birthdays, Vaishnavas don't like to celebrate their birthdays. On their birthdays, it's stated in Shastra, a Vaishnava should pack his penance and austerity and he should give away in charity. He should become purified of the bodily concept of life, not glorify the body. 
Igazából ma is lehet nem mindenképp a születésnapjukat, hanem ilyenkor a védikus írások elére a vezetéseket végeznek, és adományoznak, és így módon próbálják megkicsíteni magukat a testi felfogásról. Igazából egy megvalósított bakta szégyeli magát a születésnapjukat. Somebody says, oh, today's your birthday, how old are you? To be reminded that I fell from the spiritual world and took this uniform of the material body and broke it down the prison house of the material existence. So we sober on our birthdays. But this birth, this diksha, this second birth by the mercy of our spiritual master, this is something to celebrate. This is a wonderful auspicious occasion. Because through this gradual process of Krishna consciousness, gradually we awaken our dormant love of God, we awaken our spiritual senses, one day we actually regain our original spiritual form in the spiritual world. So this is the beginning of all auspiciousness. Ezt is, aki az folyamatát fokozatosan követve egy nap, majd visszanyerjük a valódi formát a felállítő világban, és ez tényleg a kedvezőség, ez a kedvezőség. Jó, akkor ezt tényleg, és a sástra, Jenemé, Jenemé, Szabad. De in the material world, everyone gets a mother and father. That's not anything so great. Ezért az írások azt mondják, hogy az anyagi világban mindenki kap anyát és apát, ez nem egy nagy dolog. But if one can get the combined mercy of the spiritual father, of the spiritual master, and Krishna, then one, can perfect his life by going back to God. <laughs> and in a sense, this diksha, this initiation, it is just like spiritual birth. It is like a birth. Just like in the material concept of birth, the man, the father, he plants the seed, the beach, the seed, into the, of the living entity, into the womb of the mother. He plants the seed into the womb of the mother. So, in the spiritual sense, the spiritual master, he plants the seed of devotional service in the heart of his disciples. Same type of process. This is described by Krishna as Kaviraj Goswami in um, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Brahmanda Bhamati Kaur, Bhagavan Ji, Guru Krishna Prashad, Hari Bhakti Latavi. So the living entity is wandering from Brahmanda, from universe to universe. He's wandering from species of life to species of life. <laughs> but somehow, the by great fortune, he comes in contact with the bona fide spiritual master who does what? He plants the bhakti lata beach. He plants the seed of bhakti or devotion in the heart of that disciple. He begins his spiritual life with that seed of bhakti. So naturally we feel indebted to our material parents. We should feel indebted to them in the sense that they have they have provided us with this material body, they have raised this little body into adulthood or womanhood and given us the opportunity to take the Krishna consciousness. We understand that, we're appreciative of that fact. But how much more appreciative we are of the fact that our spiritual master has taken the trouble to plant that seed of uh, devotion in our heart and it teaches us the process of nourishing that seed until it develops and produces it, come, it develops into a big a full plant it produces very delicious fruits of love of god guru krishna prashad Bhai Bhakti Lata Beach. Kaviraj Goswami describes this is a very rare uh, occasion that one can come in contact with the bona fide Vaishnava, the devotee of the Lord, and receive that Bhakti Lata Beach. It is very rare. 
So the disciple should always reflect on his good fortune that by the mercy of Krishna has received a bona fide spiritual master. And by the mercy of that spiritual master, we can achieve Krishna. That's why we should have to have the Talko, he encourages at least three times a day. We should meditate on our good fortune. We should remember the lotus feet of our spiritual master. Then we can take full advantage of the good fortune he has given us. Unfortunately, it is seen that when one is an infant, one cannot see things as they are. He may not appreciate something that is actual, actually valuable. <coughs> For example, a young child may be given a, a golden ring by his, by his parents, or he may find a golden ring in the house, and if they just think it is some shiny object, then he may just want to throw it into the river and throw it into the mud as some fun. Because he's very young, he can't really appreciate something of great value. So similarly, we are infants. Actually, all of us sitting here, we are infants in spiritual life. <laughs> and we may not truly appreciate that bhakti like to be is that love of God which comes in the form, the seed like form of the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. We are receiving from our spiritual master. But even though we may not truly be able to understand the full glories of the Holy Name, at least at the point of initiation, we should have faith that the Holy Name is non different than Krishna, and that our spiritual master is Krishna's representative sent to give us the mantra and deliver us from material existence. At least that qualification must be there for those who are taking initiation. <coughs> Initiation means the beginning, so of course we're not expected to have full understanding of all the, the, the nature of bhakti and guru and Krishna, etc. But at least we should be at the point. Yasha Devi Pada Bhaktiya, Yata Devi Tata Guru. At least we should have full faith in our spiritual master, Krishna process the holy name. We should have that faith because by having that faith eventually all the purports of Vedic literature will be revealed to us. All that is needed to be known about Krishna will be revealed to the heart of the, of the, of the sincere disciple. So we have achieved this rare fortune somehow or other that is all by Prabhupada's mercy that we are sitting here today. Chanaka Pandit, he expresses this, this rare opportunity of coming in contact with the, with the sadhu, with the devotee, in a very beautiful way, poetic way. He says there does not exist a ruby in every mountain. No one would find a pearl on the head of every elephant. Nor will one find sandalwood trees in every forest. Nor, no one can find a sadhu, a genuine spiritual master, in every bird. It is fair. So we are very fortunate. So, because we are all in this prison house of material existence, we, we require a fight to get out. Actually, everyone requires the help of a spiritual master. Because we have this material body, we have so many problems. We are all suffering. And therefore, in our suffering condition, we should inquire from the sadhus how to become free from the suffering condition. 
Ezért ebben a szenvedő helyzetben kérdezzük a szállítól, hogy hogyan szabadul meg ebben a szenvedő helyzetben. This is the sign of an intelligent person. He wants to solve the problems of life. He's not like a cat or a dog. A cat or a dog, they don't have the intelligence to solve problems. They just go on on their instinct, looking for food, shelter, mates, fighting. A human being, he's described as a rational animal. We're animals in the sense that we have these gross material bodies, but we have intelligence, and with that intelligence we can perceive. I'm suffering, but I don't want to suffer, so how do you get out of this suffering? This is the beginning of human life. Ez az ember tudja, hogy racionális állat, de van intelligenciája, amivel meg tudja érteni a szenvedést. De akkor felteszi ezt a kérdést, hogy hogyan tudom megoldani ezt a szenvedést. Próbálunk megoldást találni a szenvedésünkért. Just like Sri Rupa Goswami in his Padyavali expresses this, this sentiment very nicely. Sri Rupa Goswami a Padyavaliban nagyon szépen ír erről a dologról. He's praying to Krishna. Imádkozik Krishnahoz. My dear Lord, I am drowning in the painful, fathomless whirlpool of repeated birth and death. O friend of those who have no shelter. O refulgent moon of mercy. Please, just this one time, quickly extend your hand to save. Everybody knows there's no Material remedies for the problems of material existence. For hundreds of years or thousands of years, man has been trying to solve the problems of life with some material formula. But according to Pallad Maharaj, the result is that we cause more problems than there were originally. The problem, the solution is a spiritual solution. Because originally, the original problem was a spiritual problem in the sense that we forgot Krishna. So we have to find a spiritual alternative to the complexities and the problems of material existence. We don't, we don't want to just tolerate the pangs of material existence. We want to find a, a solution. To solve those problems of, of material life, we need the Lord. Who can extend his hand to save us. And what is that hand which the Lord extends to save us, to pull us out of this uh, problematic material existence? His devotee. That is the mercy the Lord extends to the aspiring devotee to help him out of material existence. That hand, that is the mercy of his representative, the spiritual master. So we can follow Guru out of material life. If we choose not to follow the Guru by following his instructions, Krishna's perfect, concise instructions, how to get out of material existence by following this authentic path of Krishna consciousness, then we have to follow Gauru. An ignorant fool. Everyone is accepting some leader. Either we accept the Guru to take us out of material existence, or we have to follow the Gauru. The Gauru actually, Gauru means cow. We have to follow the cow, you know, back into material existence. Shilabhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, one of his favorite stories at these initiations used to be the story of how someone with one man followed a Gauru. He used to say there was one, one young man and he was going to the uh, house of his father-in-law. But because he was blind, he got lost on the way. And he asked the local coward man, please can you help me get to the house of my father-in-law? 
So it just so happened that that cowherd man within his herd of cows, he, he owned one of the cows, or he had one of those cows that belonged to the father-in-law. So he told the blind man, you hold the tail of this cow, and he will take you home to your to see your father. So the blind man, he grabbed it really tight, holding that tail, okay! And then the cow heard man, whack! On the back of that, back side of that cow, he gave him a big whack, and the cow started running back to the house of the father. So we can just imagine the scene, what happened, he's being, you know, pulled across the fields and raked through the fences, between trees and over branches, and through rivers, and like this, and like this, and as somebody said that by the time he arrived at the father-in-law's house, she couldn't even recognize him, he was just a mess of bruises and broken bones, and bloody mess and when he got there the father-in-law said what are you what rascal are you who are you what are you doing in my house he beat him and sent him away Sorry. never even achieved his goal in our modern society there's so many so-called leaders. But because they are not conversant with the transcendental science, the science of Krishna consciousness, they cannot take us out of this material existence. They can simply entangle us more in material life by their so-called leadership. Why is that? Because generally the so-called leaders of modern society, they simply encourage people in sense gratification, karmic activities which entangle us again and again in material life. So the blind people of Kali Yuga without any spiritual knowledge, they grab the tail of these leaders and they rake through material existence. Real leader is a devotee of Krishna. Who knows the science of Krishna consciousness. A leader means one who can take you from darkness to light. Who can take you from Maya to truth. Can take you out of this prison house of material existence to the ever free world, the spiritual sky of Krishna. Therefore, the Vedic literatures emphatically state that we should approach the lotus feet of a spiritual master to get out of this problematic material existence. That is the only way. In the past, atheists and materialists have tried to, to go to heaven by mechanical means. For example, Ravana, he foolishly tried to build a, a staircase to the spiritual world. He was building a mechanical out of wood and stone. He was building it. He got very high, but he was very far. But even if you could travel at the speed of light for millions of years, you wouldn't come close to the spiritual world. You have to be trained by the bona fide spiritual master in the process of devotional service to be qualified to enter into the spiritual world. And what is that qualification? Pramanjani Chuiti Bhakti Velojina. When one's eyes become smeared with the salve of love, when one awakens one's love for Krishna, that is the qualification for entering the spiritual sky. This is good news, because especially in this age, who has any qualifications? Material qualifications can't take you anywhere close to the spiritual world. 
főleg ebben a korban kinek van valami képesítése, anyagi képesítés nem tud a lelki világ közelét adni. The very element. I'm just a simple bhakti, a simple bhakti. What qualifications do I have for advancing in Krishna consciousness? But that is not disqualification. The only qualification is you develop love for the Lord, for the spiritual master, and the Vaishnavas, and you serve them with your heart and soul. That's what pleases Krishna. No other qualification is necessary. Sri Rupa Goswami prays in his Padyavali. Where was the hunter Dharma's piety? Where was Druva's maturity? Where was the dumb elephant Gajendra's knowledge? Where was Kubja's beauty? Where was Sudama's wealth? Whoever speaks of Vidura's noble birth? Where was Ugrasena's chivalrous strength? He says they had none of these things. But the Lord accepted them. Because Lord Madhav is pleased only by devotional service and not by any material qualification. So, we have no material qualification, but if we develop this qualification, we add a reciprocation out of love and gratitude for the Lord and our spiritual master, the Vaishnavas, for their causeless mercy upon it. We can render a little service to them, develop a little attachment for the lotus feet, then Lord Madhava, Krishna is pleased, and it's a chance that we can go back home, back to God. Actually, if you think about it quite soberly, it's not an easy goal to attain. Pure love of God. If we look honestly into our hearts, this goal, this is the goal of the devotee. I have no desire to accumulate wealth, neither do I want to enjoy beautiful women, neither do I want any number of followers, name, fame, prestige. All I want, my Lord, is that I might have your causeless devotional service in my life, birth after birth. What a goal to attain. But if we think in that terms that I will try to attain this goal myself, then we miss the whole point of devotional service. Actually, as aspiring devotees of the Lord, Vaishnavas, one time they said to Prabhupada, you are the greatest Vaishnava. Prabhupada said, Vaishnava, he said, I'm trying to become a Vaishnava. Vaishnava is the most glorious position in all the worlds. What is the special character of a Vaishnava? That he's completely dependent upon the mercy of Vaishnavas, upon the mercy of the spiritual master, and the mercy of Krishna. He knows that if he will achieve anything in Krishna consciousness, it is by the combined grace of the Vaishnavas, the Guru, and Krishna. How do you Guru Vaishnava? That is the deeper meaning of this initiation. The candidates are taking shelter. They are being welcomed into a wonderful spiritual family which has been created by Sri Prabhupada. And just like in any good family in this world, the family members help each other. This International Society for Krishna Consciousness has been created so that we can get the association that is necessary that we can become fixed up in our devotional service and please Krishna. This is this initiation. The spiritual father is welcoming the candidate into the spiritual family of Islam. One can find the shelter that is necessary 
to achieve that exalted goal of love of God. It is the duty of those who are taking initiation to learn this process of taking shelter. Taking shelter of Krishna, taking shelter of Krishna's holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Taking shelter of the spiritual master by following his instructions perfectly, not deviating even an inch, but following perfectly each and every instruction, general instructions and the detailed instructions that the disciple receives, following those instructions to the letter, that is, a, that is the meaning of taking shelter of the spiritual master. And taking shelter of all the Vaishnavas by serving their lotus feet. One who comes into the spiritual family of Iskand by initiation and learns the art of taking shelter, and by the mercy, Hari Guru and Vaishnava. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati said, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back to Godhead in this very one life. So it is, it is possible to learn this part of taking shelter. So we are taking shelter, these initiates are taking shelter today formally of their initiating spiritual masters. In the form of his instructions. Sri Prabhupada has said very clearly in the Madhya Lila section of Chaitanya Charitamrita that the most important instruction that the spiritual master gives the aspiring candidate is to chant 16 rounds of Java, the holy names, every day. That is a vow that these initiates will be taking before their respective gurus today. They will be promising to chant 16 rounds of the holy name every day, if not more, and to follow the form of the two principles. So that is, that is the do. Baba said, when you, like you go to the doctor, then he gives you the do's, and he gives you the don'ts. Do take this medicine, don't go outside in the cold. And by fo following that proper formula of do's and don'ts, one can become cured of the disease of material existence. So the most important do is chant 16 rounds of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And naturally, conversely, the don't, the most important don't, the most important don't, there's many don'ts, but the most important don't, because that's the most important do, chant Hare Krishna. So the most important don't is don't offend the mercy of that holy name. The most important instruction is to chant 16 rounds a day. And the most important don't is to not, is to not commit any of the 10 offenses that one can commit against that holy name, which is all merciful. So now we've heard about the, the do's of devotional service, taking shelter of Krishna, taking shelter of the spiritual master, taking shelter of the Vaishnavas. And now it's one of this book, the Vidya Punamaraj will tell us about the don'ts, and how not to commit the ten offenses to the holy name, which could curtail our advancement of Krishna consciousness by following this very sublime process. Shri Nam Prabhu Ki Jai Shri Papa Ki Jai Shri Shiva Sham Sundar Ki Jai
Baba Ganesh Narendra Sya 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 So in the chanting of the Holy Name, we have ten offenses to be avoided. First is to blaspheme devotees who have dedicated their lives to uh, propagating the Holy Name of the Lord. Why this is an offense? Now, of all the offenses, this is considered to be the worst. That's why it is first on the list. That the Lord's mercy comes to us through the devotees. The devotees, they are preaching the holy name of the Lord. So it is through them that we actually are receiving the, the name of the Lord. And the Lord's mercy. As we see that the, uh, uh, the neophyte devotee he is not so knowledgeable in the process of chanting the holy name. And generally his concern is that is there's him, there's his guru, there's God, and that's it. And the tendency is not to see others. And the Uttamadakari, he sees everybody as servant to the Lord, and the only one that's not is himself. So then he is not distributing mercy either. We see in the Bhagavatam when anyone was taking the mood of an Uttamadakari, they're not distributing any mercy. <laughs> so in the position of the Madhyava, then that mercy is given. <laughs> Because the Madhyama sees the, sees the Lord, sees the senior devotees, sees those who are equal to him, and those who are junior. And avoids uh, those who are inimical to devotion. So it is through the Madhyam Bhakta that the Lord gives his mercy. <coughs> so if one, uh, and if the Madhyama wants that somebody feels that someone is qualified and should receive that mercy, then the Lord's mercy follows that. The Lord follows that desire. So one should be very careful about offending those who are preaching the Lord's glory. Thinking them of a lower standard or ordinary. But they are the door through which the Lord's mercy passes. Second offense is to consider the Lord's the names of the demigods to be equal to or uh, more powerful than, the, than Lord Vishnu's name. That the Lord has two kinds of names, his principal names and his secondary names. So the principal names, these are names that contain the Lord, <coughs> that qualities, I mean the Lord in his relationship with his devotees. And Krishna means all attractive. Means he is attracting the devotees. Or Madan Mohan. Who is the uh, who bewilders Cupid. And attracts the devotees. Or Nanda Nandana, who is very dear to Nanda Maharaj. Jashoda Nandana. Or Gopinath, Lord of the Gopis. So the, these names that are the most pleasing to the Lord and the most powerful. Then below this, then we have names of the Lord in which he is manifesting his unlimited potency. Like Bhagavan. Meaning who is, has all opulences. 
So in these qualities, then, then a portion of this potency of the Lord is then given into the demigods. So Madhvacharya points out that when we hear in the Vedic literature Indra, this is not referring to the demigod Indra, but to, but to Krishna, who is the king of everybody. Or Shiva, this means Krishna, who is the most auspicious. So it is just that some living entities get the opportunity to serve the Lord because of their piety in the positions of demigods. So there's no question that they are having the power or they are having any uh, potency outside of the Lord's potency. So one should never consider that they are...